Guys, it's a 6 a.m. start. Uh, as you can see, the tide is coming up. There's about an hour, an hour and a half till high tide. And what we're looking for is gutter. Uh, over here, it's extremely clear. You can see that there's gutter to my right. That's what the surfers normally use to get out to the breakers at the back. So if you can see, they use that gutter to get out. And I don't know if you can see over there, but these two surfers just had entered that gutter and are making their way out to the other surfers. So that's a perfect gutter to my right-hand side. To the left as well, I can see a gutter. Now, the swell is a bit down today. Not much of a swell around, uh, but it looks good. It looks good. As you can see, there's waves breaking over there, which indicates shallower water. And then... Uh, to the right as you can see that open area over there that's a clear indicator that there's a large gutter over there and that gutter will be now uh, as we're coming o around to high tide that will be done as well to the left as well we have a gutter so we're really really spoiled for choice now all right we've reached our gutter and what i want to show you over here that there's a if you have a look over here there's like a kind of like a hill and this is where the sand is then it goes down a lot and there's all the very gutter in front of me um, but as the tide rises that gutter will get really really deep and believe me or not that's where you'll get the large fish within 10 20 meters out from you so you don't need to cast a whole lot far out today we're after salmon of course but uh, it's a wild card. You can pick up anything over here. You can get Trevally, you can get Taylor, Flathead, Jim, uh, Whiting. Whiting, you usually want to use the worms. But today was specifically after salmon. Okay, so what we're using today is that we're using our uh, bait runner 8000 and we have a 30 pound braided line on on that you don't really need braided line on uh, uh, or you don't need 30 pounds uh, for salmon this is just on the high end of things because I have the graphite aero wave and it's a lethal combo I've caught many fish with it although even I've only had it for less than a year under a year now all right so what we have over here I've tied the braid to a three-way swivel um, at the one part of the swivel or one area of the swivel I have my running or, or I have my star sinker which will act like an anchor will anchor up in the sand and the other end that's about 50 centimeters about half a meter then around a full meter length I have my actual rig it's one meter I have my rig and what it is is two hooks the top hook is snelled and bottom hook is simply tied down. Now this is an old rig. I've used it twice now. I've caught about three salmon with it and a couple of sharks. Um, but the, sh the hooks are really, really sharp. They're mustard hooks, of course. Really, really sharp and they work well. And if you have a look at that, I have about, not a, uh, about six, seven centimeters in between them, but that will all depend on the size of your culture. Now I'm gonna show you how I Okay, so this is how I'm going to put on my pilchard. Now it's commonly known that salmon usually bite from the head, uh, whereas tailor bite from the tails. So because we're after salmon today, so I'm going to rig him up in a manner that the head is down and the tail. So, very, very simple. By the way, that's a 3 -0 and that's a 4 -0 hook. So my 3 -0 hook will go in like so. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie this up in a manner so that it's really, really it's nice and tight. That will go in the tail like so. And then, very important, I'm going to put a half hitch on it. A half hitch knot, and so that it holds it in. It holds it in nice and firmly, as you can see over there. Those two hooks, those two barbs are nice and exposed, and that's what you want. Now, if you have a look around there, uh, I'm going to be casting it straight into um, straight into the gutter. Uh, let's see how 
though. There's, uh, there's over an hour left for high tide. What I've found out is that salmon have come really, really early in the past, but salmon have really only come on the bike at around the 7 or 8 o'clock mark. Alright, so very important as well, if you have a look over here, you have to have obviously a uh, bike. I have an iron one. You also get the pipe ones, but I don't like the pipe ones because they fall all the time. Um, and so important as well, if you have a look over here, I'm going to set my drag as well. Uh, it is a bait runner, so I have that bait running option, but I don't like to use it, to be honest. I just like to set my drag, not too heavy, not too light. And here we go. First cast of the day. set and now all it is is just a waiting okay. game. So this is my second setup over here if you want to have a look over here. This is simply a 10 pound setup. Um, it's with mono line, mono filament line. Uh, it's cheap all the way. So I've got this, I think it's the brand, I don't even know what the brand is. It's been rubbed off something Kato I think, Kato Shark. Not a bad one at all. Um, then I've matched it up with a Rovex 4000. What's the name on it? It's called a Rovex Pentium, I think it is. Nitrium. Rovex Nitrium. Rovex is um, Jarvis Walker brand. Their higher brand, I think. Um, uh, it's bought me fish as well. I've had it now for about a year. And uh, to be honest, I'm happy with it. Uh, so all I'm doing with that is that I have a small hook on, it's size 1 hook. Um, uh, I have caught salmon on size 6 hooks in the park, which are tiny, tiny hooks. So I'm going to put a whole pawn on that and see what happens. Right, I just want to show you as well, uh, if you're new to surf fishing and you see your rod going up and down, up and down, uh, don't get too excited because you have to work out with the wave as well. Remember the wave, the waves, the actions of the wave, the pull and the ebb of the wave. That is causing it to go up and down. So you have to know what a bite is and what is not. Pretty much, um, if you see your rod buckled over, um, going all crazy, hopefully we can show you that. Then you must know that you have something on. When you're out surf fishing, you want to look at ideally three things. You want to look at the wind, the swell, and the tides. The weather, as in whether it's cold or hot or rainy, I don't really worry about. In fact, like today, it's mostly over cloud forecast for some showers. That's I look at that as ideal fishing weather. But your most important factors, the most important factors, uh, your wind. So today we have minimal, minimal wind as you can see. Not much wind around at all, which is perfect. Uh, our swell is a 1.8 meter swell, which is a moderate swell, which is perfect as well. So you don't want it too rough where the stinker won't stay on the floor. Neither do you want it flat like a lake. Uh, and the third factor is your tides. And we have a rising tide at the moment. It's just about, uh, it's about an hour to go for the high tide. So we've got all three factors uh, in perfectly.
be on still. out of his misery now. He's a bit small, um, but at this time of the year, <laughs> summer, uh, he's going berserk, I've put him out of his misery. Uh, this time of the year, in the warmer month, you're going to get them a bit, you're going to get them slightly smaller, but you can catch more of them. In winter, you get the large, large models. Um, so, very important with the Aussie salmon when you catch it. They're an awesome eating fish. What you do is that immediately you fillet them. Okay, immediately fillet them. Snap that neck, let all the blood come out. Now what I like to do, I like to just get in there. I like to grab hold of his uh, blood and I'd like uh, his pills and uh, take that out. Now an old method, very, very old method is that you Dig a hole in the sand and you let him in like that. Put him in halfway. So what happens there is that all that blood from the top allows to drip and it falls down away from the body. There we go, there we have it. Uh, so as I as, as I mentioned earlier that they are late fish, they bite late in the morning. So it's happening at 8 30. Let's see if we can catch any more. That's it. I walk down a bit and then walk it up to the light. Let's start. Fish number two. Yeah, no one. Finally happened and look at that time. Smack bang 9.30. Lazy fish there you go. So caught one at about what time? What time was eight the first one? Something. Eight something. Eight thirty. Eight thirty and the second one at about 9.30. So much larger. 